Okay, in this video, we're doing number one from the 2024 AP Pre-Calculus exam, which was, I think, the first version of that exam ever given. Let's take a look. Um, the figure shows a graph of function f on its domain, negative 3.5 to 3.5. The points negative 3, 1, 0, 1, and 3, 1 are on the graph of f. The function g is given by g of x equals 2.916 times 0.7 to the x. A, number one, the function h is defined by h of x equals g of f of x. Find the value of h of 3 as a decimal approximation or indicate that it is not defined. So uh, first up, we want to say that h of 3 would be g of f of 3, assuming it's defined. Uh, we need to know f of 3. They gave that to us two different ways, once as an ordered pair up above and also on the graph here. So g of 1, because f of 3 is 1. So we're doing g of 1. g of 1 we're going to need a calculator for. So I typed in g of x on my calculator, and then I did uh, g of 1. I got 2.0412. go with three decimal places, so 2.041. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Part 2, find all values of x for which f of x equals 1, or indicate that there are no such values. Kind of a weird problem, because they literally gave us three ordered pairs that have 1 as the y value. But I think they're testing to see if you know what function notation is, maybe. Um, so we're trying to solve f of x equals 1. Uh, that pretty clearly from the graph and or from the given information communicates three different x values. We have x is negative 3, we have x is 0, and we have x is positive 3. So those are our three places where f of x equals 1. Let's take a look at uh, the next part. So we want to find all values of x as a decimal approximation for which g of x equals 2 or indicate that there are no such values. So um, in this case, we're trying to solve g of x equals 2. I can do this two different ways on the calculator. Uh, first up, I can literally just use solve. Solve g of x equals 2. Uh, that's a valid way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it is we could graph g of x and graph 2 and find the intersection point. So I did both of them just to show you the options. Um, but either way, you're going to get 1.057 because we're going three decimal places. All right, the next part, determine the end behavior of g as x increases without bound. Express your answer using the mathematical notation of a limit. So I think all you need to do is write a limit here. Uh, I know that in the practice things, they sometimes write out uh, some other additional stuff, but let's see. Uh, so I just, one, you can see from the graph, right? As x increases without bound, the y values or the outputs of the function um, are approaching zero, or you could literally just use the limit template and see that the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x is zero. What's nice about the limit template is it also shows you exactly how you should write your answer. So that's our answer to part two. Let's look at part C. Uh, we wanna determine if f has an inverse function. So the answer here is f does have an inverse function or f does not have an inverse function. Those are like the only two options there because part two of this is to give a reason for your answer. So we don't justify in part one, we just answer the question. Uh, you can look at the graph. And you can see uh, this definitively does not have an inverse that is a function. So my answer is going to be no, f of x does not have an inverse function. For my reasoning, um, I'm going to point out that there's an output value that is associated with two input values. There's actually It's actually associated with three of them. Um, so here's two of those from the ordered pairs. We know that f of 0 and f of 3 are both equal to 1. So in my mind, that's enough to justify it, but I bet it's not enough to justify it. So I'm also going to kind of write a sentence that refers to input values mapping to the same output value, because if two or more input values map to the same output value, the function will not have an inverse function. So that's basically what I'm going to write. I say each input of f is not mapped to a unique output value. Um, and that's the entire question. So uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck.